So welcome back, students. Uh, we are again in the grammar class, our class tenth. Okay, I think we had sum up with simple future tense. As I can see here, the markings that we had uh, done that day, isn't it? So tense is yet to be completed. So let us uh, take a review on all of the tenses means the rest of the tenses then we will go further for our next topic and that is determiner have you got it okay yes okay so uh, that day we had seen about the simple future tense what is the simple future tense that makes it that makes a sense over there how does it make a sense over there as we use the subject then will shall and even I told you, uh, shell is non-emphatic and will is emphatic, okay, upon the action word. Have you got it, Shada? Yes, sir, I'm listening. Okay, you're listening, uh, very nice. Uh, see, students, whatever we have been learning since that, I mean, so since we have uh, joined this class, okay, all together, uh, from that time, I am telling you, I have been telling you that, uh, the things which are common, which are general, okay, about the tenses. You have also might have gone through that, okay. Means the sir is telling the same thing, but only the thing is changing, and that thing is the examples that we see here, like interrogative sentence. How do we uh, make uh, interrogative sentences? Then how do we make the uh, <coughs> negative sentences as well? Okay, it is very simple. As you once uh, feel free to understand if the tenses are common in the sense their structure is common only the words are changed like uh, helping verb okay this is changed somewhere else okay means in all these sentences the helping verbs are changed but the format of writing the negative sentence the format of writing the interrogative sentence is same almost isn't it it depends upon which tense or in which tense are you making interrogative sentence as if uh, you are making a simple tense or continuous or perfect or perfect continuous. Have you got it? Okay. What if there in simple tense, we use main verb first form in continuous, we put ing with the main verb first form. We use here third form of the main verb in perfect tense and in perfect tense, we use uh, been plus main verb ing form understood this is the only difference that we use there okay but the tenses are different their helping verbs are different as if you see as you can see here is it brought to you all future continuous tense what is future continuous tense and why do we use it see it is written over here that to indicate an action that will occur in the normal course that will occur means that will be continuing at the time of speaking uh, means at the time of doing that in the future at some point of time to indicate an action that will be in progress at a given time or point of time in the future for example you are making a plan to go somewhere else tomorrow so definitely that will be the action which will be done by you in the future time suppose you have planned for something tomorrow Okay, so that will take place tomorrow and that will definitely be continuing uh, in the given time. Suppose uh, you say, uh, I will watch Terminators at 10 o'clock tomorrow. So definitely at 10 o'clock, you will be watching, means you will be involved into the action and that will be continuing. Are you getting that will be continued that is why future continuous tense is used how do we make the negative it is obvious like uh, after will be exactly we do not use negative uh, or negation after will be as you can see here we use not in between these two two words that is will and be whenever i told you already whenever there is a 
combined helping verb which were combined helping verb for example can have could have shall have shall be could be can be okay maybe might have these such kind of verbs if they are uh, used there a, a, with a combination of some other words so whenever making its negative you have to put this word not in between them okay in between them have you got the point okay so this thing is yes. happening over here they will not be studying in city college suppose what would be its affirmative its affirmative would be they will be studying in the city college yeah. it's simple as that right it's very simple and sometimes it is asked you in the exam that change or transform the sentence or tense into negative without changing its meaning as well understood at that time we must know and most of the times what happen such kind of sentences come with the adjectives and we must know the opposite adjective while transforming it into affirmative either or in negative okay and that would not change its meaning for example uh, i say that was very difficult that was very difficult just take an example i am telling you the transformation of sentence while we are studying exam oriented okay exam orientation uh, we have kept in mind and we are studying this this grammar so the example in between whatever i would give there be con just consider it okay whenever you say that it was very difficult means change it into negative without changing its meaning in the sense what would be its opposite if it was very difficult so it was not easy not very easy yes so along with not you would have to use opposite adjective of the adjective used in the affirmative sentence have you got it yes same thing we do with interrogative sentence as we have if we have to make the verbal type of question with sim, uh, future continuous tense so we will have to use will or shall first after that subject then be and then main verb first form plus ing have you got it suppose you have to make the interrogative negative interrogative sentence so what would be their structure will or shall okay plus subject now you will use here not i have written it in bracket because if suppose you will remove not so it will become affirmative interrogative sentence and after that you have to use be then main verb ing form and then object if it is there or other words have you got it okay yes. so if you want to make it negative so not you will have to use after subject in interrogative sentence have you got it huh yes okay now let us go <coughs> to future perfect tense future perfect tense it is the third sub type of future tense okay as you can see here subject plus will have or shall have again this is what is this what kind of helping verb is this what kind of helping verb is this future perfect huh combined i just told you right now combined helping verb it is as it is using two words this helping verb is using two words this the will and shall is showing you future and have is showing you the perfection in future tense of particular action understood yes sir. have you got it means that would be completed the action would be completed at a given time or at some point of time in the future the tense why is it used the tense is used to describe an action which will be completed at some point of time in future have you got it okay means some yeah. action will start in future it will start in future it will be continuing for some time and it will be done or completed 
it mean this is start this is continuation and this is perfection in the sense perfect it means it is done or completed and all these things will happen in future tense in which tense future tense it means suppose you have planned something but you even uh, think that the action which you have planned to do in the future that will be completed that will be completed at the given time there in future only understood definitely if the action is uh, starting in the future it will get over there in future as okay have you got it with this yes sir this is the start of the action this is continued uh, for some time and this will be perfect it means this will be perfect in the sense that will be done or that will be uh, and that will be completed in the future okay at a given time let us take the example of this now example is given like i shall have prepared the notes by tomorrow morning means by tomorrow morning the action which i have taken in the hands or to be completed that will be done by tomorrow understood have you got it yes sir yeah so i don't i i don't think that there is a need to explain it okay there is no need to be explained okay whatever i have just told that is only explained over here now the rules for negative sentence in the future perfect tense the same rule you have to follow whatever you have followed there in the uh, other perfect tenses earlier but they all were with the single helping verb or a yes, single helping verb but in future tense future perfect tense you have to use the combined that is will have or shall have okay as you can see here negative sentence you will used like and again the same thing occurs here you have to use not in between the combined helping verb in between will and have look at here in the earlier tense i just told you how to use not in between how to use not in between the combined helping verb okay yes, yes or no please be responsive whenever i ask yes, you something sir. you have to respond in the class this is not a one way communication learning is a process where you have to be involved in that only teacher will speak it is not means mandatory only okay students are all to be involved in the class yes and in almost all the classes so far i always ask you to respond that should not happen i think okay beta yes sir okay sir at least you can say yes or no that's all understood so negative sentence would be made like this i or we first person if there so shall plus not suppose some other subjects are used over here just look at here you he she it they you is a second person he she it and they these all uh, these all are third person okay so you will have to use will not shall understood i told you the concept of using will and using shall whenever we use okay that thing i already explained in the earlier lectures understood so you will have to uh, use will if you are using these kind of means these subjects in your sentence of future perfect tense understood in exam there may be a question 
if what should be used there with these subjects understood as it is of only 40 marks paper there so in that they would definitely try to uh, means confuse you with the questions the passengers will not have reached the station before the train starts example and main verb third form interrogative same thing will happen there whatever is done in the earlier tenses interrogative sentences will be made like and again i have not put here the interrogative sentence with negative one okay so negative structure of that would be of that uh, tense this uh, future perfect tense we'll see here like will or shall plus subject plus not will be used after the subject many of the students what do they do actually if they have such kind of habit to write the perfect tense as they think that after the main helping verb main helping i am telling uh, i am calling it as main helping verb as will and shall is given there so immediately they will use not here but it is not the right way while while writing negative sentence okay in this tense or of this tense will shall plus subject plus not then you will have to use have plus main verb i uh, sorry third form okay then if it is object there so object you would have to use after the main verb after that you will use other words have you got with the tense future yes. perfect tense yes, let sir. us understand now future perfect continuous tense this is a far away action okay that will be starting in the future that will be continuing in the future that will some at some extent it would be completed and may it is possible that it may continue in the future time in the sense it describes an action that will be in progress over a period of time that will end in the future end in the sense i have written end over here but there is a possibility that it may continue it may continue in future understood but that will definitely start in the future tense subject the structure of this tense is subject plus will have been why do we use been can anybody explain i have already told about this because it is going on continuous who who told this tushar hm tushar no i'm i did not get the satisfactory answer i did not get the satisfactory answer there anybody prarson shadab please don't disappoint me okay because i have already told you what is the use of been there shall i tell you yes sir okay see whenever we use been there it is a b form i already told you what is it it is a b form and it is a form of b and that is also in perfect form in which form perfect form b being this is present participle and been this is past participle okay these are the forms of b b itself being it's a uh, present participle and been it's perfect means past participle so you we use in perfect continuous tense to show the perfectness of the action because we can't use both the forms of main verb at a time can we use suppose i would have to say she will have been working here since 2015 so if i say this sentence like 
she will have worked working here since 2015 is it correct grammatically and even in speaking also it is not correct right so to make it perfect this verb if we have to make perfect so in future um, means any perfect continuous tense we use been have you got it i would not repeat it again but you would have to keep it in mind okay beta understood yes sir hmm. kritika kritika am i audible to you kritika okay be there but okay if your mic is not working or something some problem is there so let it be there but don't leave the class as you many many of the classes you have bunked it means if you did not join automatically get disconnected sir i don't leave okay those those classes last classes that you have done not uh, means attended this app isn't working okay okay now is it working properly sir last period science also i rejoined two to three times but it got disconnected okay there might be a severe problem of your network right in your area okay then the classes are recorded you may go through them okay but be in class all the times same rules we have to follow while transforming the sentences into negative and interrogative same thing you have to follow understood only i have not written and that thing is in negative interrogative sentence structure i have not written over here understood so i would be writing here i'd be writing over here okay will shall plus subject plus have plus been so where shall i put not where shall i put not sir between okay. have and been between have and been hmm haven't haven't been good main verb i ing form plus object plus other words that you may use any words over there if it is necessary or means it is necessary to use the words over there have you got it okay this is your negative interrogative sentence but it is of verbal verbal type of question if you are asking so this will be done so, uh, and while transforming the negative interrogative sentence with wh word or question word so you have to just put wh word over here understood before helping verb have you got it have you got it yes sir yeah yes sir in this way we have completed with the tenses uh, all the 12 tenses we have been learned okay and uh, i am announcing right now that there would be the test on sunday for all these tenses understood so prepare all these yes sir got it is there any doubt so where are you going to take the test that i will tell you later on sunday is far away from now okay what do i view now let me know if you have any doubt in the class in the class in the sense in this session uh, that uh, since we have been learning tenses from that time till now is there any problem with the tenses as any concept you did not get as any sentence a transformation of sentence you did not get from here okay so i can again um, explain it on your queries if you have any is there any problem with the tense as if you did not understand okay. uh, some tense or any tense or is there any confusion with the tense no sir no confusion no, sir. sir i have a question 
Yes, yes. Where do we use ought in? In which tense do we use ought? Ought to have like. Okay, okay. Like, those are uh, those are actually the model auxiliary verbs that also we are going to means include in our uh, syllabus. Okay, don't worry about it. Ought okay. to is ought to is similar to should. Okay, should have. Oh, okay. Understood. That I will explain how is it similar to should have. Okay. Understood. Yes, sir. For example, it is also used with should and should have. Okay. For example, we should respect our elders. This is a very common example suppose i have to use ought to so only you have to remove should we ought to respect our elders okay that's all understood it's but same ought, meaning of should but ha huh, but only to write an impressive sentence you can use ought to okay we got it okay there is no other rocket science behind it only to make it impressive you may use because should is a common helping verb that we use or auxiliary uh, sorry model verb okay that we use in almost all the sentences suppose you have to use ought to so it it makes a different impression upon upon the person who is listening to you got it yes sir yeah so that's all with the tenses i am happy that you don't have any queries upon it okay now let us go to our another uh, topic and that is determiners okay that is determiner that i'm going to share with you just now are you able to see the screen yes sir yeah it is visible to you i have got the messages now let us understand this is again chanakya tutorials hyderabad is presenting english grammar with determiners okay let us understand what determiners are actually determiners are noun makers and modifiers it is written as noun makers and modifiers 
means whenever the word modify or modifiers is used it means they tell you something extra that noun is not only tells uh, te uh, means uh, it, it does not only tell you what is that but why is it used and how is it used that is also told by that particular noun which is used so and in this work hello hello yes sir uh, my audible to you yes sir yeah yes, you are on okay okay see in this work in this work of noun determiners are the factors which are used to make them to tell something extra about themselves so determiners introduce a noun or noun phrase they limit specify or clarify their meaning and reference of noun uses they limit in the sense they do not exceed with the meaning they do not exceed with the <coughs> sorry they specify them what are the now what are those nouns clarify their meaning what meaning they are producing their reference of noun usage okay what kind of determiner is used over there it tells you the uses of particular noun okay but most of the uh, article uh, sorry uh, determiners they tell you the definite form of the uh, noun or indefinite form of the noun okay how do they use we will going to understand here determiners function like adjectives most of the times most of the times they use they are used as adjectives they are also called as fixing words fixing word means and there is a, we are not using this word for a, a, any um, mass fixing and other things okay we are using this word in regard of in regard of the nouns they fix the position generally the preposition are used to uh, uh, tell the position of the noun okay but here the determiners can also fix the position of the word okay which is used after that or the word which is followed by them understood what are the characteristics of determiners have you got with the determiners determiners are the adjectives they sometimes <coughs> most of the times they use <coughs> sorry most of the times they are used as adjectives they fix the word okay even they tell you something extra about the noun which is used after them understood characteristics of determiners determiners introduce or signal that a noun or noun phrase will follow and then give information about them after which it will follow after the it means nouns are used or nouns are followed by the determiners in a sentence okay and they give information about that noun also they may tell whether the item that is a noun is general or specific singular or plural if it is quantified nouns or tell about ownership of nouns they can refer to nearness or farness of nouns okay koi cheez pass mein hai dur hai ye bhi bata sakte hain if that noun is telling you about the ownership or we can say it position okay position that also can be termed as ownership of the noun quantity can be told using such determiners quantity 
and that may be definite or indefinite that quantity may be definite or indefinite suppose i use the word sum sum is just telling you that a little amount but what is the volume of that amount we don't know do you know definite volume of the amount we do not know have you got it am i audible there yes sir okay so see why are we studying all these because these are the parts of our syllabus and you might have gone through such things before also but this time as we are facing for the first time or oh, sorry second time the board exams okay so according to their syllabus and according to their way of asking questions we must know each and everything that is why in detail we are going to study this understood each and everything will be told you just you have to support in the class call it in short what is what can be said about determiners we can say that determiners tell in which reference the noun has been used it is very important line very important line here the above line means in short it is it can be expressed over here that in which reference that noun is been used it may be told or it may be justified there understood have you got it yes sir yes sir okay yes now these determiners are being classified into four types as you can see here articles i think most of you and almost all of you might have heard about articles and even you might have gone through the uh, classes about articles okay then demonstratives or demonstrative adjectives quantifiers quantifiers those quantifiers are again classified into these things or these types definite number indefinite number or quantity distributive differences and comparatively how do we use the determiners this all the all the things are included over here and at last possessive determiners are used like possessive what are these possessive adjectives these are okay possessive adjectives uh, that we use in the tenses or in other sentences as well understood most of the time we use such possessive adjectives in our tenses or sentences these are very easy to understand so let us understand one by one um, their kinds the types okay and their uses is as well okay those all the things will be uh, discussed in this lecture so articles we have three articles indefinite and definite art, uh, sorry two articles uh, indefinite and definite article in indefinite we have two articles a uh, and 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 indefinite article we have only one article and that is the demonstrative ad adjectives that they include here such words like this that these those i'm explaining over here only this is referring to singular and which is near that is referring to singular but it is far <coughs> same thing happens with these plural but near those plural this those the demonstrative adjective is used as a determiner to uh, figure out the plural things and that too are far from up, uh, us understood quantifiers a quantifier is a word or phrase which is used before noun to indicate the amount of quantity uh, sorry amount or quantity of particular things types of quantifiers like definite number 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 
first second third these are ordinal numbers and these are cardinal numbers whenever we use the fixed numbers those are called ordinal and when, uh, sorry cardinal and whenever we rank the things or person whenever we give the rank this is first second third for example i say uh, ramesh stood first in uh, i am o exam okay i am o exam ramesh stood first it's uh, means uh, what is the rank of ramesh first it means he has been sitting there first in the row if suppose there would be the row so he is sitting there in uh, his first or he has been secured the first position or first rank into that exam okay indefinite number i just told you before some time this one where is it this one did i tell you indefinite quantity like some many some but how many we do we do not know many but how many we do not know much but how much we do not know enough suppose i say you are taking a tea or a coffee someone is asking you that uh, do you need some sugar in your tea so you would say no it's enough for me enough in the sense that makes you satisfied there with the quantity which you pass then few there is a difference between few a few little a little okay that uh, we are going to study uh, we are going to learn in this lecture only okay several most these all are the words which are used as the num indefinite number or quantity where we are not specified with the numbers and quantities over there understood yes sir distributive distributive in the sense suppose many things are available but each in the sense everyone every whatever is present over there or whosoever is present with every each and every all all together either either this or that neither not this means neither this or uh, neither this nor that have you got it means most of the things are available but not this uh, neither this nor that it it generally is used with the combined uh, subject okay where neither first or second is responsible for something here the same thing happens either this or that understood both the things are specified over there and both are used for singular means different subjects differences another other comparative it just works like comparative degree degree of comparison whatever uh, we have been uh, we have learnt in the last class okay you might have learnt about okay that is also used as determinant because it tells something extra about the noun which is used there over there and most of the times comparative determiners are used with the adjectives they are used with the adjectives have you got it as if we already yes, had uh, discussed about okay with you let us understand now determiners and kinds of nouns with which they are used we must know how do we use these determiners and with which they should be used okay it is very very important to be understood this okay so we have a and each everyone another and either these are used with singular countable nouns keep it in mind all the times okay that such determiners which are a uh, and each everyone another either these are used with singular countable noun for example suppose 
each student was attentive in the class it is my assumption huh? <laughs> it is my assumption that each student was attentive in the class is it referring to a singular noun yes sir okay change the ink oh my god it is easy got it it is referring to a singular singular noun is used over there second thing this and that these are used with uncountable nouns or even singular countable nouns this may be used with uncountable nouns which are not singular and for and definitely they are used with the singular nouns okay they are used with i'm just cutting it these are used with singular countable noun for example this book that flower okay like these those they are used with uncountable nouns plural countable nouns these flowers those flowers these students those students these people those people okay in such way you may use it a little a lot of a great deal of much these are used with the uncountable noun i heard much noise in the room this is uncountable noun this is uncountable noun that is used over there okay ha huh? one second beta next more most a lot of enough adequate some these are used with uncountable nouns and that too with plural countable nouns got it second thing a few several many both these are also used with the plural nouns in this sentence okay for example there are a few apples a few apples uh in the basket understood a few apples some the any my her your are there eight species whose what whatever these are there these these uh, uh determiners are used they are used with any type of noun okay any type countable uncountable okay but some is used with uncountable nouns uh, sorry uh, they can be used with countable as well as uncountable nouns sorry okay you may count and you may not count the nouns if you are using some okay <clears throat> they may be used in both the uh, situation means some can be used and these determiners can be used in both the situations with uncountable and countable nouns now let us understand what articles are or else whatever the introduction and the characteristics of the determiners and their classifications we have seen till now and even we have seen that how and when to use 
uh, to be used such kind uh, such uh, determiners in our sentences while using them okay that too is learnt over here now it is the turn of learning actual determiners over here from articles okay but the time is restricted over there and this is the time now to uh, leave the class okay as we have already reached to the time bound okay so have you got with the determiners their characteristics and their types as we are going to continue uh, this tomorrow day after tomorrow okay and be present in the class whatever the queries you have you can put me uh, you can put those uh, uh, queries on my personal number okay don't put those queries into the group and one thing i am asking you that i wanted to take a feedback from your side i had given you something some questions i had given you as homework in sst but nobody sent me uh, sent me any kind of answer of those questions at that day someone asked me to give him half an hour to complete the uh, answers with the question okay but till now his half hour, half an hour is not completed or what okay so let us conclude with the class we will meet tomorrow have a nice time good night bye bye thank you sir Thank you, sir.